Hello everyone, Jinx here, one of the Monster Hunter Math Guys. So something very important is happening this week in Monster Hunter World, and that is that the Gala Armor is back. Now, the Gala Armor was the armor set for the Anniversary Appreciation Festival, and it is the only festival armor set that is a must-get. With this armor set, the title of this video is no exaggeration. With it, it is entirely possible to consistently farm over 100 vouchers an hour. I mathed it out. But before we get too deep into explaining how to get the Gala armor and why it is so important, I do want to quickly mention something. So it has come to our attention that a lot of you do not know that we have a Twitter and that Tuna has a Twitch. Tuna and I are equal partners in this business and we do split everything. So following us on Twitter and following Tuna over on Twitch is one of the best ways to support us completely for free. In fact, Tuna will be live the moment this video goes live, so be sure to go check us out. Alright, let's talk Gala Armor. So, how do you get the Gala Armor? Well, you have to get 15 total appreciation tickets. Now, you get these the same way you get any other festival tickets. Every day, you can get a ticket as a login bonus. And then also, you can go to the research trio and see what your daily bounties are. These are very simple things like complete event quests, hunt a certain amount of a specific monster, etc. There's also a bounty you get for completing all three bounties, which gives you even more tickets. It should only take you about two days to get enough tickets to make the Gala armor set as long as you do these bounties and get the login bonus. And then you can just hop up to the smithy and craft them over there. Don't forget to augment and upgrade them as well. Now, if you don't already have the Gala set, this is only going to be available for the next week until next Thursday, so be sure to get it while you can. But why do we care about getting the Gala armor set? After all, the helmet's the only one ever used in meta sets, and you can replace that with a Nogagante helmet in most builds. Well, that's because of the set bonus Great Luck. Now, to clarify, we are not 100% sure what the exact effects and the exact numbers on Great Luck are. But we do know that they affect the quest rewards you get at the end of every quest. Also, just like the Capture Master, Good Luck, and Master Carver set bonuses, this only works if you start the quest and continue to use until the end of the quest this set bonus. And to further clarify, this is almost never worth using. Because this does not affect the other rewards you get, such as the investigation rewards from your boxes in your investigation. So it won't increase the amount of decos you get, or the amount of streamstones you get, or even the amount of monster gems you get. And it also doesn't affect the rewards you get for capturing or killing the monster in the second row of boxes, as well as any part breaks, which is where you also get rarer monster parts. So if it doesn't help with your stream stones, your decos, or with your rare monster parts, what do you use it for? Well, there is one thing in particular that it is extremely good for, and that is food voucher farming. So there is a rotating event quest you are very likely familiar with called Greeting the Gluttons. Greeting the Gluttons is by far the fastest way to farm vouchers in the entire game. You are guaranteed to get at least two vouchers per run, and every single box has a significantly high chance of getting a voucher. The most I've ever seen personally is eight, but you do get around four on average. Now, with Iceborne coming out very soon, it is very important to have plenty of vouchers ready for when you start clearing through the Master Rank campaign. Food vouchers guarantee that you get food skills, and for certain weapons, this is extremely important. We plan on putting out a full video discussing all different foods, how to get them, as well as which ones are best and most optimal to use for each weapon type. But the TLDR is, for the cost of a voucher every hunt, you are getting essentially free damage or utility. The only problem is vouchers take a long time to farm normally. But with Greeting the Gluttons, it is very realistic to farm over a hundred an hour. Alright, so let's take an in-depth look at this quest and how to farm it most efficiently. So first off, this is probably the only quest in the game that's actually worth running great luck on. This is because the thing you are farming directly are the vouchers, and these are all in the quest rewards that great luck improves. The quest also gets done so quickly that running a higher damage set in order to kill the monsters faster and get more iterations out of it actually ends up not being worth it compared to running great luck. The only other quests that's arguably worth running great luck on are ones where you get unique tickets like the Arc Tempered monsters. But those hunts take so long that the damage increase you get from running actual damage sets or from running more safety with utility heavy sets does shave more time compared to simply getting great luck. Okay, so first let's talk about general strategies to shaving off time with greeting the gluttons. Now you may be wondering why would I want a guide about such an easy quest? 
Well, greeting the gluttons isn't a difficult quest, but if you want efficiency, then you need to know how to shave time off of it. If you can save 30 seconds per run and you're doing at least 15 runs an hour, that means you're saving 7.5 minutes per hour while farming for vouchers. Very nice, Sue. So first off, let's look at the actual monsters in the quest. There is a Great Jagras, low rank, 682 health. There is a Puke Puke with 1120 health, and a Paolumu with 2330 health. Now Paolumu also has much worse hit zone values, meaning he'll take less damage, and he has more health, so he's the one you want to focus on hitting the entire hunt. If we focus attacks primarily on Paolumu, the other two will generally just die from splash damage. Paolumu is also the one who is most likely to waste your time because he can fly around and be annoying. So that's tip number one, focus your efforts on killing Paolumu first. The second tip is don't waste your time with eating food. The problem is, is you cannot go straight back to the gathering hub from this quest, meaning that in order for you to eat food, you have to run all the way to the top of Astera and then eat. If you have an SSD, this is a huge waste of time because by the time you get up there, you will have loaded the quest at least 10 times over. And even if you don't have an SSD on my PS4 Pro, by the time I get up there, it's already been at least 5 seconds of the quest having been loaded up. And then 5 more seconds of going through menus, eating the food, and cancelling out the cinematic. Overall, this wastes about 10 seconds. You will not save those 10 seconds from the small attack buff you will get from eating food. Even without an SSD, you'll be doing around 15 of these an hour. That's 150 seconds wasted an hour, which is basically another entire quest done at that point. So not worth it, just skip it, we're looking for efficiency here. Now you may think once you load it into the quest, surely you can just go eat and then go to the arena and fight the monsters. Well again, that wastes at least 5 seconds per run, and on top of that there is another thing. And that is tip number 3, which is to use a very specific opener to each of the runs. So as soon as you load into the quest, you want to run immediately to the rope lift. Now as soon as you reach this little area, you have to crawl under the moment you crouch down, roll, and it'll cancel out half of the crawling animation and save you about 2-3 to three seconds. Immediately run to the right straight at Paolumu. As you can see here, he immediately sees me. Then you jump straight down to the left here, land right here, place your health booster or whatever else you want to use, and he'll land right on top of you and you can start beating him up. This method immediately aggros Paolumu and drops him down to this lower area so you can fight all three of them at the same time while focusing him. It's important to make sure Paolumu gets down here because if you fight him up where he spawns, the other monsters may not even aggro until he dies. And if you don't jump off into the pit at that spot, Paolumu may spend some time messing around up top before he actually jumps on down. There's also some stones at the beginning you can pick up to flick at the monsters to try to aggro them. The only problem with this is you still run into the same issue where they may screw around a bit before actually coming down. And if you don't shave those 2-3 to three seconds from rolling to cut down the crawling time, or because you decided to eat in the arena before running to Paolumu, there is a chance that before he even gets to see you, he'll start looking around and not see you and not follow you down into the pit. Which again is why eating isn't really worth it because you waste 5 seconds getting the actual eating done and then you also potentially lose time because of the fact that Paolumu won't follow you down. The final tip is if you learn to get a feel for when the last monster is capturable, tranking and trapping them to cap them is going to save you up to 40 seconds per run. The default return to base timer is 60 seconds, which is about how long the hunts are gonna take you. Saving 40 seconds per run is a huge amount of savings in terms of time, but it does mean you do have to waste traps, which is resource expenditure. And because monsters don't limp in the arena, it's something you kind of have to learn from experience. Okay, let's talk the two main strategies that will be the fastest if you just want efficient clearing. The fastest is unsurprisingly clusters. With clusters, you of course run the Devil Joe Heavy Bowgun because it is the highest damage clustering heavy bowgun. Now I go ahead and throw on the Rocksteady right away because the monsters are all going to be dead before it runs out. Now you just use the standard opening here, pull Palumu and then jump down and then you place a health booster right where he's going to land. And then you just start clustering. You always want to aim your clusters at Paolumu because the others have such low health that as long as you're aiming all your shots on Paolumu, they'll die from splash damage. This method is not only the fastest method, it's also so brand dead easy to use. This is how I used to farm vouchers back when I was speedrunning KT. It's so brain dead that I used to do this while watching anime and catching up on seasons I'd missed. 
After you do this enough times, you can pretty much build the muscle memory where you don't even have to look at the screen except for when the quest loads in. Now, a very fast cluster run will be going sub 1 minute, a slightly sloppier one about 1 minute 20. So let's take an average of let's say 1 minute 10 per cluster run. Now, if we assume a 25 second load in and out time for an SSD, that's roughly what Tuna and I's PS4 Pros and SSD take. And an HDD load in and out time for a quest is about 100 seconds. Restocking and selecting quest takes about 10 seconds. And then of course a kill leave timer is 60 seconds and the cap timer is 20 seconds. So for an SSD with kill only, that's about 22 per hour. At an average of about 4 vouchers per quest, that's going to be 88 per hour. With an SSD and capture quest, that's going to be 29 per hour, which is 116 vouchers an hour. With an HDD and kills, that's going to be 15 per hour, so 60 vouchers an hour. And with an HDD and captures, that's 18 per hour, so 72 vouchers per hour. Which is very efficient farming, especially because you can watch anime while you do it. As for the build, it's just going to be Gala armor. You have to run at least three free element three to make clusters work. Everything else you just slot in peak performance, attack boost, agitator, just as much as you can possibly fit for more raw attack. All the other level 1 slots you have open after you filled in every deco you have for attack boost, you just want to slot in either medicine decos or poison resistance decos. The best way to increase your cluster DPS at this point is to make sure you have high peak uptime, medicine gets you higher uptime from healing, and poison resistance stops Puke Puke from poisoning you, which will completely kill your peak uptime. But there are three issues with running clusters. First off, you do expend quite a few resources per run because you will be using about 6 to 8 bomb berries per run. This isn't a huge deal because you could just have one of your slots in your botanical research having bomb berries, but it's still an expenditure. Secondly, when the new Iceborne changes come out, Cluster is getting nerfed hard because you're only going to be able to carry 5 bomb berries now. Which does mean this strategy might not be viable then, but we'll see. The other issue is, well, you need a release deco for this to work. Free element slash ammo up 3 is mandatory to making clusters work. If you do not have a release deco, then you'll have to run a different set instead. So the Guild Cross set also has the Great Luck set with only 4 pieces, but the armor kinda sucks. But you know, sacrifices have to be made when you don't have the decos for optimal builds. Also, just to clarify, on cluster sets, the mods do not matter. There is no mod in the game that affects cluster 3. Two recoil, one close range mod makes sticky ammo usable on this heavy bowgun, which is important for other cluster runs, but for greeting the gluttons, it's irrelevant. Now, using pretty much any other weapon in the game, you can get sub 2 hunts consistently in greeting the gluttons while using the gala set. But there is one weapon that is built to be specifically good against multiple opponents at once, and that's the Switch Axe. So, Switch Axe, when it is amped, has a unique mechanic when fighting multiple opponents. Every single time you swing through an enemy or through a corpse, you get an explosion when your sword is amped. These explosions have an AoE radius. This means when you have a bunch of monsters or a bunch of corpses and monsters bunched up together, you get multiple explosions hitting a single target per swing. In greeting the gluttons, this can cap out at 2 extra explosions, which is the total of 14 more motion value. That's roughly a 50% damage increase per swing on your switch axe, which does make the switch axe uniquely fast at finishing greeting the gluttons, assuming you can manage to get all the monsters lumped up together. The strategy doesn't really differ at all. You open the exact same way, the only real difference is you want to put your rocksteady on at the last moment instead. It does require you to actually pay more attention, so you can't necessarily watch anime while doing it, but it is a lot more fun than using clusters in my opinion. And no resource expenditure. Neato. And we do use Rocksteady instead of Temporal because as long as you have a health augment, it doesn't really matter. These are low rank monsters, they don't hurt. And Temporal does use an animation every single time you get hit, meaning it does waste time compared to using Rocksteady. Now my faster runs on Switch Axe do hit around 1 minute as well, but there is the issue that there's a lot more monster RNG in terms of the AI you have to deal with, which can sometimes lead to monsters taking a minute 40, minute 50, so we'll just take an average of 1 minute 30 for a Switch Axe run. So with an SSD kill runs, those are going to be 19 and a half runs per hour and about 78 vouchers per hour. SSD captures are going to be about 25 per hour, so about 100 vouchers per hour. HDD kills are going to be about 14 per hour, so that's about 56 vouchers. And HDD capture runs are going to be 16 per hour, which is about 64 vouchers. 
Still pretty good, but definitely clusters are better. As for the build, I run the stick switch axe because we don't have master's touch in this build. Between the huge amount of natural white sharpness as well as the natural razor sharp in here, this is going to be your best DPS option. I wouldn't particularly recommend running a protective polish build with a different weapon because sharpening does take extra time which adds extra time per rotation and on top of that it means you might end up missing the window to pull down Paolumu to the pit instantly. Overall, whatever DPS gains you could get from running a polished build with a different weapon wouldn't really be worth it for the time lost because of those two factors. Now, I did mess around with running a Kiar Paralysis Switch Axe build instead, and I have to say I don't think it's worth the damage loss. The only monster that really is annoying to kill on this hunt is going to be Paolo Lumu, and you only get one Paralysis, if that, on him before he dies because of how low health he is because he is a low rank Paolo Lumu. Personally, I don't think it's worth it, just run sticks instead. By the way, this is the exact same build you'll run with pretty much every other weapon if you want to run the sticks variants. And speaking of the other weapons, you'll all pretty much end up hitting around 2 minute, maybe sub 2 runs once you get used to this quest. But at 2 minutes per run, you're starting to look at quite a lot less vouchers per hour as opposed to getting 1 minute 10 runs or 1 minute 30 runs using clusters or switch axe. And please keep in mind I am talking about average run times. I'm sure that pretty much any weapon can hit around 1 minute run times with this quest. But you do have to average that with the really bad runs you have too while farming because monsters decide to just kill be around everywhere. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys on this one. Vouchers are important, will be very important when Iceborne comes out, so be sure to farm them up while you can. As always, thank you so much for watching the video. If you learned something new, be sure to like the video, and if you have any other strategies you use for farming vouchers or for this quest, be sure to let us know in the comment below. And huge thank you as always to Honey over at HoneyHunterWorld.com for creating and maintaining the tools we use to make sets with. And if you'd like to come chat with us about various things in Monster Hunter World or just various topics in general, be sure to check out our Discord server, The Mathalos Nest. And we do of course have a Twitter where we post updates about videos and various things that interest us, as well as Tuna does have a Twitch. In fact, Tuna will be live the moment this video goes out, so be sure to come check us out. And of course, none of this will be possible without the generosity of our patrons. So an especially big thank you to Furay, Yoshi Cho, Fly T, David Sternberg, XALK07, Hulkanis, Gilgi, Heike, Milky Powder, David Ju Sinclair, John Cohen, Sinful by Nature, Warren Kios, Hensatsuken, Papa Slatch, Wed Manticore, Captain Big Brain, Zamir Washington, Superfly, Bram Orsel, Roddy Raw Dog, Anti Spartan, Lightweight, Javi. Week, the Local, BB Livingston, Flago Blast, Jordan Petit, Skyler Yang, Kong Kong, Miguel Lopez, Lupin, Mongus, Kumiko, Triple Agent, Augusta Oliveira, Caracas, Zarashi, Alan Odom, Baguette, Zimv, Sir Kite, Billy Barthol, Mali, Yordi Cosmopara, Marcus S. Carney, Dandy, Captain Walmart, Magister Obscura, Jamie, and every single one of you who supports us on Patreon. Iceborne is coming out very soon, which is going to be a huge moment for the community and a huge moment for this channel. We would not have made it this far without your generosity. I bring up pretty often how you guys help remind us constantly that what you guys love are our content dense, well researched videos. Well, I bring it up again because you guys did help us find our identity and find our place in this beautiful community. And we could not be more thankful, so seriously, thank you guys. Alright, we do have plenty more pre-Iceborne videos coming out for you guys very soon, so make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because hitting the notification bell is how you find out about all the new videos as they come out. Subscribe doesn't really do that anymore. You know, if you want to, I'm gonna go lie down now. Sick boy needs rest. Happy hunting, hunters. See you guys on the next one. Bye.